One reason that Switzerland is such a peaceful country is the involvement of the church. Unlike in other countries which have their constitution clauses separating the church from the state, Switzerland employs the church by giving it tax money to act like a welfare agency, catching any homeless who fall through the state's social welfare net. Another reason that Switzerland is such a peaceful country is that all interest groups are represented by political parties and their voices are heard. From the rich and privileged represented by the FDP to the poor and needy represented by the SPS. The CVP protects the Christian's way of life while the GPS protects the environment and the SVP protects Switzerland's culture, sovereignty, neutrality and its unique example to the rest of the world of the only real functioning direct democracy. Perhaps the main reason for Switzerland's success at keeping its peace as long as it has is the unique direct democracy. While other democratic countries are democracies only on voting day when citizens delegate their democratic rights for the next four to five years to politicians, the Swiss practice direct democracy and vote on any issues that come up with immediate plebiscite. In 1971, Swiss women received the right to vote. The Swiss people vote around four times a year on about 20 issues at a national level. There may be even more referendums in cantons and communes touching on very local matters. There are two different ways to consult the people depending on the nature of the issue, the popular initiative and the referendum. Popular initiatives do not originate from Parliament or the government, but they originate from the citizens. They are considered as the driving force behind direct democracy. Any Swiss citizen has the right to propose new legislation or change existing legislation by launching an initiative. Although normally initiatives come from pressure groups rather than individuals. If they manage to gather 100,000 signatures in support of the proposal, it must be put to a national-wide vote. Initiatives are usually a call for a ban of something in order to protect something else or a demand for action that the Parliament has not made. In the past 145 years, there has been only 166 initiatives and only 18 have been accepted, about 1 in 10. Six demand initiatives have been accepted. Demands for proportional representation, for a way out of international treaties, for improving direct democracy, for price control, for UN representation, and for expulsion of foreign criminals. Twelve ban initiatives have been accepted. Bans for inhumane slaughter of animals, use of absinthe, building of casinos, banning the banning of building of casinos, developing marshland, building new nuclear stations, working on the country's national birthday, increasing traffic in the Alps, sexually abusing children, using genetically modified crops, and building new minarets. Initiatives for proposing any change are normally rejected. Changes like changing tobacco, alcohol, and hemp laws, limiting the number of foreigners entering Switzerland, banning weapon exports, adding more lanes to autobahns, adding more tunnels under the mountains, changing the speed limit, or increasing social welfare. The Swiss use the term referendum for a popular vote called to challenge a piece of legislation already approved by the Federal Assembly. If any person or group opposed to the new law manages to collect 50,000 signatures within 100 days of this official publication of the proposed legislation, 
The voters as a whole are given the chance to decide whether to accept it or reject it. The authorities are obliged to hold a referendum if the legislation involves an amendment to the constitution initiated by the government or any proposal for Switzerland to sign a major international agreement which cannot be resigned. In the case of an initiative or a mandatory referendum, there has to be a double majority for it to pass, meaning a majority of the people as a whole and a majority of the cantons must approve it. Women's suffrage, which was approved by Parliament in 1959, but then rejected by an entire male electorate in a subsequent referendum. Men only agreed to accept the project in 1971. Critics point out that the double majority rule gives an unfair advantage to the smaller cantons which tend to be conservative. Only about half of all proposals are accepted by the people in referendums. Voter participation is around 40%. Moves are now underway to experiment with electronic voting in the hopes that this will raise participation. Laws normally accepted by referendums are those that subsidize railways, support banks, the free market, and the entrepreneurs, and make it possible to extradite foreigners. Laws normally rejected by referendums are those that make it easier for foreigners to become Swiss, or make it easier for the poor Swiss to get welfare, or make too close ties with foreign countries. Direct democracy allows the people to voice their concerns so that politicians have a better feel of the mood of the people. The messages left are, in the first 135 years from 1866 to 1990, let's be fair to ourselves and to our foreigners and to our animals and build up our country. Let's exercise our rights. No to 44 hour work week. No to government intervention. No to change. Yes to protection from change. Yes to female voting rights. With the inclusion of women, the message and tone of the Swiss had drastically changed. In the last 20 years, from 1990 to 2010, the messages were, let's stop building any more nuclear generators, let's have a holiday and protect our mountains, and let's not worry about fixing things that are not broken, let's provide more social welfare to the Swiss who are poor, we trust our government, we trust our people, we need the rest of the world but we do not trust them. There has been controversy over two recent initiatives, to ban minarets in 2009 and to deport criminal foreigners in 2010. They have been seen as a violation of both the Swiss Constitution and international human rights laws. As a result, the government has drawn up proposals to give Parliament greater powers to reject initiatives that are against constitutional and international laws. Of course, these proposals have to be passed by a referendum. Since 1971, when women started voting, it is as if the Swiss, having been raised up in single father families, have suddenly a mother. Demands for more protection have been the result. Protection against price increases, protection in the international neighborhood, protection against foreign criminals, protection of the environment, protection of her children, protection for her children's children, and protection of the culture they will inherit. While the first most important lesson Switzerland offers is to be tolerant and allow for direct democracy, the second is the importance of the women's vote for a more long-term, fair, social and maternal approach to politics.